Good morning, everyone. My name is Alexandra. I'm the policy advisor in your cities. Good morning. My name is uh, Jaime Aznar. I am the economic development intern together with Alexandra. Um, we are happy that you joined our webinar. Just one technical remark, you are all muted, so you will be not be able to speak out loud, but you can ask all the questions and put all the technical remarks via Skype chat. We done this because it's a bit easier with the communication and the quality of the webinar. Our webinar will be um, taking play will take one hour and a half, we hope. Um, the webinar will be recorded, so later on you can always come back to all the presentations which will be also available, the recording of the webinar and the presentations will be available on our website and we will also um, inform you when it will be online via email. We hope that it will be ne the next week. Um, and yes, as you saw in the agenda, we will have also the questions and answers session by the end of the webinar. And please also, you can already start during the presentations, write the uh, questions, the feedback, the remarks in our chat, on our chat, and me and Jaime will moderate this uh, session. So yes, um, uh, today we meet to uh, showcase two best practices uh, from Bristol and Helsinki. Uh, those cities are the first one that uh, that are the first cities that develop voluntary local reviews um, to explore the key steps and the challenges that uh, led to this important development. We know that many of our members are very interested in the process and also also in work done by Helsinki and Bristol. Um, first, so we will have two speaker, two cities presenting, and the speakers mm -hmm. are. Yeah. So uh, just uh, <clears throat> to go through the people, uh, the speakers introducing each uh, VLR approach. From Helsinki, we will have uh, Sana Mari Yanti uh, doing a brief introduction. She is the director of strategic initiatives of Helsinki, and as the main speaker, we will have uh, Marjo Casila senior statistician and lead author on the Voluntary Local Review of Helsinki. Following the Helsinki presentation, uh, we will also have uh, Bristol's case, and the presentation will be done by Alan, Alan McLeod, the SDG Research and Engagement Associate of the Bristol City Council. Thank you very much. And as I mentioned, after those presentations, we will have half an hour of the session of questions and answers. And also our cities, um, Bristol and Helsinki, are also open for the follow up of the discussions later on. So it's like if you will have more questions after, we will provide you with the contact details to the representatives of both cities um, as a follow up. Um, just maybe a bit of the overview what your your cities uh, was doing so far regarding the work on the SDGs. As I saw from the registration list, most of you participating participated in our previous activities, but so just uh, really a short overview. Um, our task force um, is, uh, we targeted it to be a, a group of the technical experts uh, working on the issues of SDGs in the cities. The main goal of our work is uh, mutual learning. So as you can see, this is also uh, the way we do it today um, because uh, we map the areas of the exchange, like for example, the voluntary local review, and we try to facilitate our cooperation. Uh, of course, um, regarding the content, we are focusing on how um, the transformative agenda can be implemented and can be um, monitored also for the, at the local level for the local governance. Uh, as, um, as real cities, we organized the first uh, uh, meeting in uh, Brussels, which took place in July. We are very happy because um, we had around 40 representatives of um, 30 cities and 50 representatives from the cities participating in this uh, meeting of the task force. Uh, we also try to facilitate the participation of our members in the uh, study visit in uh, Mannheim and we organized this is our second webinar during the first webinar we presented the, the general policy overview 
and also our report our work on the report um, about the activities of the local governments regarding the SDGs. The report is still a work in progress. We will hope that we will share it with you by uh, during the beginning of the year 2020, but still this uh, this will be um, this date and final date will be presented to you later on. As a secretariat, it's uh, you were in contact before with uh, Pietro, and uh, now it's me and Jaime who is following the dossier of SDGs with our policy director Silvia Ganzella, who is not able to be, uh, who unfortunately is not able to be today with us, but she's also she's leading the film in our our network. We try to uh, monitor the developments at the European level regarding the um, importance and the positioning of the SDGs and inform the members. Uh, as you know, your cities was also the member of the high level expert group and platform working on SDGs. And what I mentioned before in our roadmap is provide you with the report from the experiences uh, from our cities regarding the war localization on SDGs. Okay, so that's it from my side. And now we can give the floor to Helsinki. Mm -hmm. And now we would like to give the floor to uh, Sana Mariyanti, the Director of Strategic Initiatives of Helsinki. And uh, we would ask you if you could to stop sharing our screen. Mm -hmm. If, uh, if uh, Sana Marie or, or Marjo, you could share your screens. Yes. Maria is sharing, is sharing the screen, so I think I can probably start to be efficient with time. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to present the case of Helsinki VLR. Um, I'm Sandra Marianne, the Director of Strategic Initiatives with the Mayor's Office um, with the City of Helsinki. And I have been uh, spearheading the VLR work we've done since the early of 2018. I've also um, participated in the work uh, by the research group that has, has created the actual VLR um, in the city. So I wanted to give you a little overview on why and how Helsinki engaged in doing a VLR, and then Mario and the rest of the team will work you through the, um, the actual process of the VLR and the results of the study. Um, in 2017, when the new Helsinki city strategy was approved and put into place, we ended up with a very, very ambitious um, carbon neutral goal. We also have very ambitious um, goals that relate to SDGs and many other fronts of the strategy. So you could say easily that the city of Helsinki and its actions are strategically very aligned with SDG work. However, we never actually during the strategy process used an SDG lens to bring all the relevant information together and really, you know, view and um, discuss the city of Helsinki strategy through that specific lens. So when we got together with our partner city, the city of New York, um, in late 2017, and started to discuss the work New York had done on the voluntary local review and ongoing study that they were doing, we realized that this would be the perfect tool and the perfect lens for us to really view our strategy and the implementation of the strategy through the SDG lens. It's a very powerful equity lens. Uh, but it also provides very specific information on your city's performance. The other one, the other reason why we were attracted to the specifically the VLR model was that it creates a body of knowledge and a framework for international collaboration and conversations. So even though we felt that we have done a lot of work on the SDGs and delivering implementation, we felt that this would be another opportunity to create a lens and, a, and an international framework for um, comparing notes and, and really kind of seeing if we were performing at the level we thought we were. The City of New York had created a very successful model, um, invented there uh, just a few months earlier. And what they essentially did was they took the voluntary national review model and implemented the city and the local level. And it's not a very research heavy model. It really just basically maps out your city strategy with the SDGs on the focus points nominated by the UN for that specific review period and creates a body of knowledge and understanding of how your city is performing, but also where your blind spots or um, missed opportunities might be and how you might develop those in order to be more effective in your SDG implementation. 
So we started to work with the city of New York and very quickly formed a cross-disciplinary, cross-departmental working group here within the city of Helsinki to work on the actual VLR, which Maria will tell you more about in a second. I think the process has really taught us three things. First of all, this is an amazing tool for international collaboration and conversation about SDGs, but not only on city level. We very quickly established a collaboration with national level here in Finland, but also a direct contact with the UN. The UN had already explored the opportunities of creating more of a platform to cities and their work on implementation of the SDGs. And I think this is going to give a framework for cities to push that platform further and really develop their own voice within the UN context. Um, also, collaboration with nations um, from European perspective might be something that we want to develop further. For obvious reasons, in the United States, this is something that will not happen in the near future. And the cities have really stepped up in the US to create VLRs and SDG action in order to complement each other's work in a situation where the nation state is not really supportive of this type of um, work and responsibilities. But here in Finland and in many, many other places in Europe, we obviously benefit from a close collaboration with nation. And um, in our case, this has resulted, the VLR of Helsinki has resulted that we are actually able to participate in the review process of the next national review that Finland is creating. So it's given us a much better position to have a conversation with the nation about the mutual targets and also the level of implementation. Um, finally, I want to say that from the strategy perspective, the SDG work has really given us two things. First of all, it has highlighted the importance of using an SDG in an equity lens towards the strategy of any city. Uh, secondly, it has created a lot more awareness on leadership level, but also other levels of city, you know, relevant city departments on the SDGs. Like I said, originally we had not used an SDG lens on the strategy, and I think by creating this body of understanding and the actual review has already educated our leadership about SDGs much more than we could have done in this very short period of time. And this will hopefully give us the way uh, for the new strategy period to really engage the SDGs as part of our everyday, every level work on the strategy. The City of New York has already committed to reporting the VLR, doing the VLR every year. The City of Helsinki has committed to doing the VLR every second year. And I really feel that this work that the group has done will lead way towards a new city strategy uh, in the next council session that will be based at least partly on the SDGs. Thank you. Thank you very much um, uh, for your introduction. I would now give the floor to Mario Casilla, uh, Senior Statistician and Lead Author of the VLR in Helsinki, to, for the details and the technical <laughs> part. Thank you, Mario. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm Mario Casilla, and I work as the project manager for this VLR task force 2019 in Helsinki. And in, in our working group, we had six members from the city organization. And actually, there are four of us here today. And we have Johanna of Hellstrom and Pireta Kuitka from Urban Environment Division. And then we have Ari Jaakola and myself from the city executive office here. And we all will be answering the questions at the end of, uh, end of the session. Okay, and here, um, here you can see a diagram of the VLR process. So we started with mapping, and the point of mapping was to uh, find out how do the city strategy and the SDGs correspond to each other. So we wanted to figure out what is already being done and what is already under review. And with mapping, we wanted to get an understanding of strategic framework in relation to SDGs. And based on mapping, we did VLR. And in, in VLR, we wanted to tell how have we done and what is the city doing to implement sustainable development and goals by the city operations. And in our VLR, the focus was on goals for 8, 10, 13, and 15. And our working process was that in mapping, um, that was carried out, out by our task force group. And then in VLR, 
we did it in cooperation with many experts from all all the city divisions. And then after we got our VLR, we um, handed it out to the UN. And then the last day, the impact is that the city can now use the experience of the first VLR to evaluate, for example, how could we succeed better? What could we be, what could we focus on and how could we highlight our successes? But at the start, we had to figure out what material would be useful for the mapping. And we ended up with these. So of course, we have the Helsinki city strategy. Then we have monitoring meters of the city strategy. Then the carbon neutral Helsinki 2030 right price action plan and the key project used to implement the strategy. We also uh, went through some actions from division action plan. And in VLR, it's notable that the review does not cover all the city's basic services or operations. Then uh, a little bit about mapping. So um, in the mapping, uh, we compared the city materials with all 17 SDGs and all 169 targets. In mapping one, the strategy is the point of departure. So in mapping one publication, we introduced the goals of Helsinki City, the indicators that Helsinki uses for monitoring the goals. And then we also introduced the concrete actions that Helsinki undertakes to implement the strategy. And as a, as a result of mapping, we point out those SDGs that are connected to the city goals. And here in the slide, you can see an example of the city called carbon neutral. So there on the right side, you can see that carbon neutral goal is connected to many of SDGs. Then the mapping two, the focus is on UN goals. And in, in our mapping two publication, we present which of the city goals linked to each SDG. We also give an example of some actions that Helsinki is operated. Now I will tell briefly about the city strategy and the results of the mapping. So, uh, the Helsinki city strategy was sum summarized into three main themes. Those were securing sustainable growth, developing services, and responsible financial management. As we can see from the picture here, uh, securing sustainable growth uh, theme, under, under the, this theme, we can see that it promotes all goals 1 to 16. Uh, then we also can see that UN Goals 1, 8, and 16 are recognized in all three of the strategy's main themes. And then under these three themes of the strategy, there are a total of 14 goals, and these all have a connection to at least one UN goal. Uh, the goals with the broadest connection to UN SDGs are highlighted in this image. So carbon neutral was the one that has, has the broadest connection. And in the mapping one publication, you can find out more about these 14 city goals. Now a little, little bit about our actual report, the VLR. So, um, high-level political forum of the UN determines a specific set of goals to be reviewed in, in depth each year. And Helsinki Review focused on the goals for 2019, excluding the SDG 17. In the report, 
we describe in more detail how do the city strategy and the focus SDGs correspond to each other. Uh, we also give examples of strategic actions and we, we wrote some description of how Helsinki is implementing focused SDGs by the city operations. The third point of VLR was to give examples of indicators. So selection key indicators that can be used to describe the development of the SDGs in Helsinki. And at this point, key indicators were picked primarily, primarily from the monitoring meters of the strategy. So here we can see briefly some results of each of those five SDGs. So we can say that UN Goal 4 is strongly represented in Helsinki City Strategy. So we found that most of the SDG targets, SDG 4 targets, can be found from the city goals and actions. So here in the slide on the right, you can see the city goals that has the connection to UN Goal 4. And for example, uh, of actions, so Helsinki offers additional funding to schools in need of special support and free early childhood ed education for five-year-olds. So these are two examples of the actions. And then the only measure not highlighted in the Helsinki City Strategy and its actions is direct aid to developing countries. Then something about SDG 8. So we got the result that Helsinki is undertaking many actions to promote SDG 8. So we actually found some targets of SDG 8 from 10 Helsinki City goals, which you can again see in the slide. And again, uh, there was only some targets that we didn't find, and those basically were, uh, which has to do something with developing countries, helping developing countries. Um, reducing inequality between population groups and regions alike is one of the most important goals in, in the health and city strategy. Uh, as an example, one of the strategic key projects, the project for youth social inclusion, concentrates to this goal. Uh, well, the city strategy does not cover UN goals that aim at improving the situation of residents in developing countries. So the re same kind of results in SDG 10 as the previous ones. Mm. Then the goal of the city of Helsinki is to take urgent action to combat climate change and to adapt to it. So uh, Carbon Neutral Helsinki Action Plan covers the goal 13 targets very well. Uh, even if adaptation is not highlighted in the strategy, we have actions for that. Then finally, SDG 16, similar results. So the goals of the city strategy and the actions widely support the UN Goal 16. So, uh, I will tell something about the key indicators that we chose. So key indicators, those were actually examples of data that is already available and under review in the city. So we wanted to get an answer to questions like which indicators from monitoring meters of the strategy are useful also for SDG monitoring at the city level. Also, we were finding out is that if there is some additional city data which would be used. And we ended up a total of 36 key indicators for monitoring SDG 4, 8, 10, 13, and 16. And 30 of them were from monitoring meters of the strategy, and six of the indicators were other data 
for example, environment policy indicators. Uh, and one of our indicators was chosen to follow up both SDG4 and SDG8. Then at the end, I will tell a li little bit what we what did we learn about this exercise. So uh, the first thing was that we learned that healthy city strategy corresponds well with the UN SDG 8, uh, 4, 8, 10, 13, and 16. And we can think that if we succeed in implementing the Helsinki City Strategy, we also succeed in implementing the uh, five SDGs. The second, uh, what did we learn about the set of indicators? So indicators of monitoring meters of the city strategy are useful for monitoring these uh, five focused SDGs at the local level. Actually, four of them, because the SDG 13, we needed to get other indicators outside of the monitoring meters. And of course, uh, comparable indicators suitable for city level monitoring of the UN goals should be developed further. And then, a couple words about the coverage of the review. So, because we, ha we had this certain material used here, so like city strategy, key project, and the carbon neutral action plan. That means the review does not cover all of the city's basic services or operations. So it gives an introduction to the city's strategic framework and uh, examples of operators, operations linked to SDGs. Uh, then the review could also include an economic angle to enable assessment of the allocation of resources. And, and expanding the review to cover the entire organization would provide a more in-depth understanding of the links between city operations and sustainable development goals. Uh, then, what did we learn about SDGs and their implementation? Uh, SDGs are a large set of goals and targets. And it would be useful to analyze the links between the UN targets and city operations in more detail. Uh, and that would help to identify the goals that, are, that require more input from a helping team. Likewise, it would be beneficial to identify the UN targets that are not relevant from the city level perspective. For example, what we found that the UN targets have many references to international development cooperation. And in Finland, these goals are managed primarily at government level. And then again, experts from all city divisions should be involved already in, in the beginning in the task force. And last, Marjo? I, yes? Apologies, you're, the slides that you're showing, it's uh, always the same slide. Yeah, I, I know, I, I, oh. I know what, what is happening because um, it suddenly stopped. I, I try. I, I'm changing them all the time, but it doesn't work. Okay, it doesn't project. Okay, I'm no worries. Please, I'm please continue, and uh, we will send the presentation later to the members. Yes, yeah. I will. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sorry. So, what's next for Helsinki? So, the implementation of the city strategy will be developed in order to ensure that SDGs are realized as well as possible in the city organization. We believe that increasing awareness of promoting SDGs in our own work increases the chance of success. And Helsinki will be communicating the results actively to residents and interest groups to raise awareness of the significance of SDGs in the everyday operations of the city. And in practice, what is happening next is that the ownership and the coordination coordination of the SDG work 
will be determined in the city organization. The working group will be expanded to cover all the city divisions. And as Sanna Mari already said, um, next time Helsinki will produce VLR and report it to UN in July 2021. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much, Mario. Uh, apologies for the technical issues regarding the presentations. Mm -hmm. um, but no worries about this. The presentations will be sent later after the, mm -hmm. the, the webinar. Uh, meanwhile, we would like to introduce Alan, but Alan McLeod from the Bristol City Council. But I am not sure if uh, he continues. He mentioned in the chat that he has lost presentation in audio. Alan, I'm not sure if you can hear us. We have all things. Um, mm -hmm. In the meantime, maybe if you have already some questions to Helsinki, we can use this opportunity to ask it. Uh, to ask, uh, please write those on the um, on the chat. Uh, maybe I have one question, which is um, uh, quite a usual uh, question from our members. How you actually organize the structure in the city administration to coordinate the uh, whole process? Um, what's, what's the approach? Could you like, elaborate a bit on it? Marjo? Yeah. Yes. Hello. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ari will, Ari will yeah, maybe, yeah. Hello, everyone. Okay. I mean, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. This is Ari Akola, um, Statistics and Information Services Manager. Um, unfortunately, Sanna Marie just left, left due to other other meeting, but um, you see, um, this, uh, in Helsinki, this was an, um, come, comes from the um, mayor and, and, and um, how we organized. We have a strategy um, unit here in um, Executive office um, and um, our um, chief of, of um, strategy, Marco Karvinen, was the, uh, responsible for the organizing this um, working group in Helsinki. And um, we have um, uh, members uh, that Mario mentioned in the first slide. That was a kind of task task force of of the of, of the this project um, that produced the the, um, the the first report, and of course uh, we contacted um, uh, to to the, our um, other department um, and and the person that persons to the persons that are that are responsible for the um, uh, you know the uh, main project. Uh, mentioned in our strategy, so this is a kind of network, networking process. But of course, we, as as, as a working group, we did the main main uh, work here, and we had uh, six members in that group. Okay, great, thank you. And maybe one question. I know it will be difficult probably to answer, but uh, we see that some cities has a different... Oh, we have the question from uh, from the members, so maybe I will jump into it. Um, so how did your map, uh, the sub how did you map the su sub-targets? Um, as they are not visible uh, in the report, uh, did you modify the sub targets? And um, yeah, can you elaborate a bit on this? We actually, at first, we had uh, this Excel file, and we we put like we put SDGs against our city goals, and then we were. Um, going through the targets one by one and try to figure out if there is a connection or not between the goal and the city goal and the target. And uh, we did the same thing to, to each um, indicator of the monitoring meters. And then that was quite tricky part of the work because uh, we needed to, every time we we were thinking like um, how should we uh, 
think about the target should be uh, like uh, modify it, it, uh, it a little bit to to be like implementing uh, implementing in the local level or could we take it as it is like written so that was quite tricky and but uh, and one thing which was also during the process we kind of realized that those are like there are a lot of connection also between SDG targets itself so uh, the same goals of the city can be connected to many of the targets of different SDGs. So we we did this detailed analysis for ourselves, but then um, at the report we decided not to show those targets target numbers because uh, just to be because we kind of had to decide. Uh, under which SDG we report this action or that action and because it's not like it's only that SDG that the action is implementing. So we just wanted uh, to uh, show examples but it could be also implementing the same action could be also implementing another SDG. So we, that's the reason we didn't want to leave those target numbers in the report, but we, it's there in the background. We have a file, but we, we didn't want to like publish it because there, it was so messy or a lot of the information. Did this answer the question? I don't know. For me, yes. Uh, yeah. Let's see what will be the reaction online. But uh, before we come back to Alan, uh, I would like to use this opportunity to ask you one more or two questions. This is also something which is always, um, always in the core interest. So what is actually the awareness of the inhabitants of Helsinki of uh, your work uh, on the SDGs or in general on SDGs, how do you communicate uh, the activities uh, that you are doing and also how you are communicated the, um, the um, SDGs work uh, and do you evaluate the awareness? If yes, how? Okay, I can start. This is Johanna Felström from the city of Helsinki. Um, well, I would say that if you stop somebody on the street and ask them whether they know what SDGs are, they would probably say no. But I think like Sanna Maria and Mario mentioned, uh, we are doing a lot in Helsinki that is corresponding with the SDGs. We just haven't necessarily been speaking about them as SDGs. That is something that is in our city strategy. And it's something that we are doing every day, for example, in schools. They have uh, a lot of uh, kind of like integrated with the education and actions in schools that are, are very um, strongly linked to SDGs, but we haven't been using the word sustainable development goals. So I would say that. You can see SDT happening all around the city, but people just don't necessarily use the SDT to talk about it. And then you okay. ask whether we do some kind of ev evaluation. We have some yes. questionnaires, so maybe Ari can. Yeah, we haven't we haven't done a specific evaluation about the awareness of of the descent, as as Johanna just described and um, we have planned that the interaction between the city and uh, or in, enhanced the, uh, the interaction uh, between the city and the um, um, citizens uh, within the framework of SDGs uh, will be done so that we are planning to impl implement uh, this SDGs his uh, target through um, two specific uh, projects. Which one is uh, this um, carbon neutral 
um, actions wasn't wasn't so. And then another um, project will be it's not this, um, defined um, properly properly yet, but uh, it's planned to be why uh, our libraries because they have um, uh, good interaction between the citizens with, with the citizens. So, so we are planning to enhance this, this awareness through this uh, some specific specific project in the future. Okay, and as Pierre Spirita Kuitka from Helsinki also, you also asked why we didn't focus on the SDG 11. Uh, it's because uh, we wrote, reported about those focus point goals that UN high level, level political forum defines annually, and these were the annual focus points of 2019. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. I know that the other questions are coming. So we have very concrete question from the city of Ghent. Um, the city is also planning to use a voluntary local review in the year 2020, uh, but they only have now just finished the new city strategy. Uh, so actually they could not evalu ev evaluate the new strategy by the year 2020. Um, so there is an idea to focus more in 2020 on mapping um, and the question uh, on, uh, on mapping, would this also be an official uh, voluntary local review, a light version? Uh, City of Ghent started an evaluation and use of indicators by the year 2021, uh, but they won't start the process and awareness, but uh, they won't, would like to start the process uh, of raising the awareness uh, uh, right now. And the question to Helsinki, do you have uh, any ideas, do you have any recommendations uh, for City of Ghent? Well, probably I can I can start at least um, Ariagola here. Um, yes. We think that the most important thing is that the city itself is aware of these um, two frameworks, like uh, own own project, own um, strategy, and 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 the, its connections to the uh, SGTs. So we strongly recommend it that. That to start to um, start to mapping mapping those connections as we did last year or this year this spring, and um, and and I would say that what we need to do in the future better uh, is that to evaluate those um, projects we we do we will do uh, or do or will do under this. Um, Framework, so so we we also have to improve the evaluation but process. But the first first step is to understand the connections between those those two two things, own strategy and and the uh, and the SDG. So so we encourage you all to start this mapping process. Okay, thank you. Uh, also, the question is coming that uh, from your presentation, actually, there was no a strong focus on the SDG number 11, which is uh, basically the one that uh, is the most common uh, choice for, for activities regarding the uh, cities. Uh, maybe you can elaborate why you did not uh, spec specifically focus on that one, but you had bit more holistic approach. Yes, uh, as we already uh, answered this question, but I can still say that uh, these uh, SDGs that we focused on was the focus points of the UN. The high level, level political forum uh, annually defines uh, focus goals, and these that we reported were the focus goals of nine, uh, 2019. Okay, um, thank you very much. Also, we have the questions, but already some of the participants are elaborating on those questions online. Uh, do you know um, of 
any uh, up-to-date SDGs awareness measurements either for a city or at the national level. So we have also the feedback from uh, Ultra that they actually already done the survey in 2017 that, uh, that and 28% of uh, of the people who took the uh, took the survey that they were at least familiar with the SDGs and the um, number of the um, of the respondents uh, in 2019 with being aware of the SDGs is raised by uh, 20,000 of respondents. I know that you said that you did not um, done this type of the research, but do you have in mind other indicators than just awareness that could be useful to uh, the uh, familiarity with the SDGs that could be useful to measure the awareness? Do you have any discussions in City of Helsinki on it? Um. Yes, uh, we haven't um, discussed this issue yet. Uh, we have mainly concentrated on on the our own understanding about this framework so far. But but this is a good question, and um, when we continue to um, implement those those um, those projects, so probably we have to discuss this. Is further that we also that how we can measure how we could measure the awareness of the of the citizens about this. But but why are those projects and why are our um, um, our report report that we released last summer? We hope that the awareness of of these um, uh, goals also uh, will be better also. Um, within the citizens, but we haven't measured or we have no uh, exact idea yet or plans to measure it. But we we'll certainly follow the discussion, and and if, if somebody has a good ideas, we hope that you 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 can share with yeah, them with us. Uh, we have also quite a concrete question regarding um, from Liverpool. So they are finishing and intermin uh, voluntary local review as the report for the cities uh, for the city of Liverpool, and they are interesting on hearing what are the tangible benefits other cities has have seen from doing this. Uh, either internal or doing after the publication. So maybe I know that you already mentioned this a bit in your presentation, but maybe you can have a bit more uh, going uh, in more details. The benefit from this, uh, I think it's, it's about to come come in the near future. Like, the, of course, it's beneficial to understand how strategy and SDGs are connected uh, like inside the city, uh, but this report and this um, type of thinking and and our future work for this, we will pen. It's it's good that we understand it inside the city so that we can implement the ideas and like spread these ideas now also to the citizens. And and like other stakeholders, so so that the whole um, whole community and all all uh, parts of it will understand this framework. Yeah. And this oh, mm -hmm. also resulted into discussion with other cities, and this is really uh, raised a lot or or. A, a lot of people and a lot of cities have been very interested in this process and, and that was one of our goals to also encourage other cities to start reporting to you and, and also because we feel that um, even though the UN actions are mainly done on a global or on a national level, uh, all the actions are made in the cities and we feel that it's very important to raise the voice of the cities uh, and, and to encourage other cities to do the same. And these reports also um, 
or make makes the, makes the city's work visible, which is very important for us, us so that everyone can see see that how much we are working or doing mm -hmm. doing um, for for to achieving those those important goals. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now we will give the floor to Alan. Yeah, so Alan McLeod from the city of Bristol. Will uh, he's the SDG Research and uh, Engagement Associate. If uh, you could share your presentation, Alan, and I give you the floor to introduce Bristol's uh, best practice. So as you know, I come from Bristol. I work with the city council there. I'm just going to do a brief background to the Sustainable Development Goals in Bristol and then go on to our experience of undertaking a VLR before some quick learnings and some further resources what we plan to do as next steps having undertaken a voluntary local review. So first, in Bristol, the Sustainable Development Goals were adopted initially through grassroots advocacy. We have a network in Bristol called the Sustainable Development Goals Alliance that started in 2016, just after the SDGs were adopted. It came out the back of our year as green, European Green Capital, and it was um, formed to try to encourage all organizations in the city to understand how the SDGs could be used in their work. So that was the, um, the, the local council, the businesses, the charities, the universities, every type of organization. This alliance was then supported by University of Bristol funding, which is the role that I am in, the research and engagement associate, to firstly research how other cities around the world have used the SDGs and then to engage within the city, both through the alliance to the wider city and through the city government and the one city office to support Bristol City Council in their use of the SDGs. It became a hybrid of support uh, to encourage embedded advocacy, to try to encourage the politicians and the local project officers and managers and directors in our council to understand the SDGs. So I spent initially one day a week and then moving up to four days a week sat with the city council helping them to understand how to use the sustainable development goals, drawing from experiences elsewhere and trying to implement the SDGs in Bristol. Uh, that then has allowed our one city plan, which is our overarching plan and vision for the city, for all of the city, for all the organizations we have in the city, as well as the city council, and then our corporate strategy to be mapped against the sustainable development goals. That was the first step towards undertaking a voluntary local review. This is just a brief picture of what our um, alliance looked like our, our uh, SDG alliance. It covers all walks of society, business, private, public, non-for-profit. It's grown since since this picture. So since then, we've now had members from Airbus, from Aviva, from the Chamber of Commerce in the city join, as well as diversity and equality groups, including the LGBT Forum, the Multi-Faith Forum, and also a number of other organizations, including some of the banks in the city, like Triodos, and some of the um, law firms. So the work that I've been undertaking occurred at the same time as a period of strategic restructuring towards a wider governance framework in the city. And this wider governance framework is the Bristol One City Plan, which is an attempt to draw together the two halves of the city. We have a lot of inequality in Bristol, and so the Leave No One Behind agenda that the SDGs presents is a really strong framework for that, and it really helps us to communicate how we want to work as one city rather than the two halves of the city that we've traditionally seen. The One City Plan was launched in January 2019, so January of this year, and it contains something like 558 different initiatives. All of them have been mapped against an SDG, a high-level SDG, and the majority of them have also been mapped against relevant SDG targets. 
When you look at the SDG targets that were relevant to Bristol's priorities, what we found was there was approximately 79 targets that were directly relevant. This is without changing building. It's trying to understand what our local priorities, which is what the One City Plan has drawn from, how they relate to the global agenda of the SDGs. Our One City Plan drew from council strategies, from business strategies, from community engagement events. We held uh, over 200 different community meetings, whether that be large city gatherings, where we have over 200 of the city leaders in the room, down to small community events discussing what they envisage the future of the city to look like. And so, what we did was compare our, our SDG, the, the wide set of SDG targets against the local set of priorities. We wanted to use the SDGs as a target uh, and as a benchmark in our One City Plan. Our One City Plan sets out our destination for Bristol in 2050, where we want the city to be. And so the SDGs are a great milestone journey. They help us to understand where we need to be by 2050 and help us to have an objective and numerical quantitative look at how well we're progressing towards our 2050 goals. And so we wanted to use that as a way of baselining and, and understanding where we're progressing on the city, on the city plan. And so we've tried to use the SDG targets and the SDG indicators that are relevant to them to form a framework for monitoring our one city plan and that's actually one of the reasons why we were really interested in undertaking a voluntary local review it helps to baseline the work that we're doing it sets a current state of play so that then having started our city plan this year we can begin to look forward and understand where we're moving in the right direction where we might be moving in the wrong direction and where we might need to change some of the work that we're doing so that we can progress more towards the sustainable development goals, but also towards our city and objectives. So our one city plan is split into six themes, and all of these themes are cross-cutting. We try to help use these themes to understand everything else that's going on within the other themes. So our environment board discusses with our economy board and our economy with our health and well-being, etc. And all of these are mapped by the SDGs and underpinned by the SDGs. Just a brief look at the sort of thing that's within our plan. This is our timeline. And every year there are 18 goals that we raise above the surface that we prioritize as a city office to try to make the city as a whole, the wide city, not just the city government, to understand how they can move collectively towards tackling these objectives. And every single one of these bullet points has been mapped against an SDG. So that's what I mean by the 558 initiatives that are within the One City Plan. So I'm going to briefly talk about why I took a voluntary local review and why we adopted the Sustainable Development Goals. Firstly, as I said, we already had a lot of grassroots activism, and that resulted in interest from our mayor, from our political lead in the city. However, what we also wanted to do was, as I said, we wanted to baseline and benchmark our One City Plan so that we could monitor our progress against that. We also wanted to try and increase engagement with the SDGs in the city. We wanted to use this tool uh, of the Voluntary Local Review as a way of talking to a wider audience than we had been previously. Much of our Sustainable Development Goals Alliance was already engaged with the Sustainable Development Goals, and we wanted to increase the engagement and increase the action towards the SDGs by increasing awareness and consulting the wider city. Most of the actions that are occurring in Bristol are all connected to or relating to the SDGs. So what we wanted to do was start getting the city to talk in the same language, to start using the language of the Sustainable Development Goals so that they could then better partner together, but also better communicate to others, share their learning, and potentially receive resource from national and international bodies so that they could then try to accelerate their own progress towards the SDGs. So we saw the Voluntary Local Review not just as a report that you put on the table and then gets put on the shelf and ignored, but actually as a, as a process 
as a mechanism for reaching a wider audience and helping more people in the city to understand about the interconnected international agenda of the Sustainable Development Goals. And we also saw it as a way to showcase transparent accountability. As a city, one of the things that we've been really interested in trying to do is demonstrate that nothing we're doing is necessarily perfect. What we're trying to do is help people understand that actually we want to iterate, we want to improve, we want to review and refresh the work that we're doing. So currently what we're doing is we've launched our One City Plan in January, but we've now shared that with the public. We've held a lot of consultation events over this year and our boards, the different thematic boards that we have for the City Plan, have reviewed our One City Plan. And now we're taking all that information from young people, from elderly groups, from Disability Forum, to try to refresh and update our One City Plan and therefore update our focuses and our work as a city. And actually, if we have a transparent baseline and set of data that lays out exactly how we're performing on the sustainable development goals, we can then try to understand better where we need to our work and our efforts and also where we can be improving the work that we're doing, but also trying to replicate the successes that we've had in the city. So by being transparent and by sharing a voluntary local review with our city, we're able to be held to account, but also we are able to try to move the dial and increase any successes we're having and tackle any failures that we're seeing. As I said already, we wanted to use the SDGs as a common language to connect our local commitments to a global consensus and a global um, agenda. The SDGs are obviously for everyone, everywhere, and we wanted to try to demonstrate that to our city. We also wanted to step in the gap where our national governments might be seen to be failing. In the UK, we held a voluntary national review last year. It was um, an attempt from the national government to begin discussions on the SDGs, but we wanted to try to take that further. We've been involved in some of the consultation events, and we wanted to show what could be done and try to lead the way. We wanted to demonstrate that cities can be leaders in this space and that cities need to be at the forefront of these international discussions. And so we wanted to do that through the use of a voluntary local review. Our national government's been focused on many other things, funnily enough, and we wanted to try to show the national government the importance of the, the SDGs through the use of this voluntary local review. We wanted to show that cities are taking this agenda seriously, and so we wanted to demonstrate that leadership. Lastly, Bristol is a very international city. It's one with over 180 different countries represented in it, and it's one where over where 91 languages are spoken. And we see these as a way of working on a common problem and working to tackle common issues across the world. We have a large Somali population in Bristol, a large Polish Polish community, amongst others, and actually by working on an agenda that all of these other countries and communities are trying to tackle around the world, we see the, uh, the SDGs as a great way of trying to move towards a more um, joined up way of thinking around the world. So Bristol's voluntary local review was funded by the University of Bristol, and that was through an Economic Social Research Council funding. And so I was supported by a professor from the University of Bristol, Dr. Sean Fox, and we decided to undertake all 17 SDGs to review every sustainable development goal, not just the priority ones for this year, because we weren't sure whether we would necessarily have the funding to do this sort of every year. So what we wanted to say was, if we can only do this report once every two or four years, we want to make sure that it's comprehensive, that it covers all of them, but also that it is something that baselines the, the full set of work that's going on in the city. So that's why we tried to do all 17 SDGs, and that is also why we used over 140 different indicators uh, to baseline a wide set of all of the SDGs.
as I said already, we wanted to represent the full city in our report. So we undertook a consultation exercise where we engaged city partners. This was in the form of a, of a survey, but we also spoke directly to some of the key equalities groups that we wanted to connect with, as well as to local councillors, so that we could then draw from their local experience and their community knowledge to feed into our report. And all of that allowed us to end up with the activity 90 organizations represented in our voluntary local review, which given that um, the national government in the UK had, I think, 200 case studies submitted, we were, and, and a large number of those internationally, we were quite proud of the, the 90 we received at the local level. On top of that, we recognize 90 is not exhaustive, it is not the full set. So actually, as I said, it was about the process and the beginning of discussions. This has allowed us to open up new conversations with groups we hadn't previously. We recently met with HSBC in Bristol to talk about how they could meet the SDGs locally, as well as with some of our care homes and community groups to try and increase the engagement with this. And then lastly, Bristol was the first city in the UK to complete a VLR, and we've been trying to support UK cities in, in their undertaking of voluntary local reviews since then. So that's something we've been working with other partners in the UK, but obviously this sort of call, we're trying to help others to learn from our experiences and our mistakes too. From having undertaken the voluntary local review, what we now plan to do is a three different things. We've nearly finished writing a voluntary local review handbook from our experience of undertaking all 17 SDGs and of trying to consult city partners. There are already two handbooks out there, one from UCLG, I think, and one from Carnegie Mellon University in America. And our handbook is has a focus on UK cities because we have the same data. We Our data is held at the national level, and so we shared some of the sources of data that we've used so that they can then engage with that data. But we also recognize that actually, hopefully, our experience and our lessons will be useful to cities everywhere. So the, the handbook is going to be published in the next two, three weeks, and we will, um, we will make sure we share the link with you. Next, we plan to use students to continue some of our work moving forward. We have a student at the University of Bristol who plans to undertake a review of gender equality in the city of Bristol. So that will be looking at how the lived experience of gender equality plays out against the theories of legislation. So in theory, we shouldn't have any gender discrimination because in the UK it is written into law, but at the moment we still do. So how has that developed and how can we be tackling that? And we're going to be writing a SDG 5 gender report. And then on top of that, we've also had the other university in Bristol, the University of the West of England, one of their master's schemes with about 30 or 40 master's students is currently undertaking a gap analysis of our voluntary local review to assess our progress towards the SDGs, but also where we are missing data and where we are missing information on activities that are occurring in Bristol. Lastly, in our One City Plan, we have a um, objective to develop an SDG plan for Bristol, and this is something we're going to be working on and trying to consult the city on over the next one or two years. In terms of lessons learned, we found, as I said, that the SDGs have been a really good way to discuss common challenges with businesses and with civil society. They are a really effective mechanism for engaging a lot of international organizations at the local level, where previously they might not have. We have a number of multinational businesses and organizations in Bristol that have had, not necessarily their headquarters, but had offices here. And so actually, by producing a voluntary local review and demonstrating our commitment to the Sustainable Development Goals, we found that that has become a really common language for engaging with those organizations that use the Sustainable Development Goals, maybe in their CSR, their corporate social responsibility, or maybe in their um, in their business planning, but actually haven't engaged with us in the city. Internally, one of the lessons we learned was that actually 
it's important to help the, your city government staff understand that this isn't necessarily a new set of targets that they have to be delivering on. What we have said to them is that a lot of these targets they will already be working on, but what we see the benefit of the Sustainable Development Goals as is that they can talk better to other cities, but also can talk better to each other about the common issues they share and also about the interconnections that they face. It helps them to see the broader picture. And so it's not necessarily um, about making sure they deliver on a new set of targets. It's about understand how they can accelerate progress by understanding the interconnections and learning from other places. And so our next step is to try and train a wider set of the um, project managers and directors within the city, as well as our councillors, which is something we're working on. We're going to train them in the SDGs and in understanding the complexity and the challenges of them. As I said, um, we learned that this actually is more about the whole city than about just the city government. Uh, that should say city governance, not city government. Sorry for the spelling error. Um, but the the idea that actually this is, if we as a city of Bristol want to meet the sustainable development goals, it needs to be the whole of the city, not just the city government. Another thing we found was that not all of the SDG targets and, and indicators will be relevant to Bristol. This is something that's a slight difference between some of the other cities in, in the world leading on this. Uh, at least one of the pieces of work they've done is adapt the SDG targets so all 169 are relevant to Los Angeles, but the current set of international uh, targets isn't all relevant to Bristol, and I imagine that will also be the, true, the same for, um, for most of your cities as well. Another lesson we've learned is that actually academic institutions can provide a strong impartial resource that actually will help to keep your voluntary local review as independent but reviewing and reflecting on what the city uh, works on. That doesn't, won't necessarily work in every city, it depends on how closely your universities work with your city, but that's something we found really useful. And I think lastly, we would say actually that a key lesson is, is to iterate and improve that actually acceleration will come as you um, as you learn from the errors you're you're currently making, but you will only begin to learn once you undertake a voluntary local review, and you'll only begin to see those gaps once you actually baseline and understand how you can continue to improve. So if we undertake a voluntary review next year or the year after, that one will be better than the one we've already undertaken, and we will continually try to improve that, make it more representative, make it deeper, make the data more um, integrated, but also more, an more analysis on that data as well. And then lastly, just to finish, uh, a couple helpful resources that we found. The first one in the middle, hacking the sustainable development goals. That was our first way of understanding which targets were relevant to the city of Bristol by looking at whether they were urban or rural, whether they were developing or developed world, and whether they were under our jurisdiction or not. Then there's also UCLG have produced a number of useful reports that I'm sure you probably will have already seen. Um, Platformer and CEMR produced some useful documents on, on examples from around Europe. And then the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies currently has a voluntary local review database with pretty much every voluntary local review on there. Currently, I think actually the only one that I know of that isn't is Helsinki, but I think um, we've connected up Santa Marie, so their VLR will go on there soon. And that has a lot of examples of different ways of undertaking a VLR. And then lastly, the Research Institute that I work, work alongside, the CADA Institute, has an SDG web page, and that's where we've posted a lot of blogs, as well as some of our reports about how we set up an SDG alliance, how we've undertaken uh, data in the city of Bristol around the Sustainable Development Goals, and that will also be where we'll put our Voluntary Local Review Handbook. So that's everything I have to say. Sorry again for the, um, the issues with connection earlier. Um, I will stop and, and I think we still have 10 minutes for questions, is that right? 
Yes, thank you very much. Actually, Alan, you answered like many, many questions during your presentation, to be honest. Also, um, please remember that you still can ask uh, questions online. Maybe I will use the question that was um, sent uh, before to Helsinki. Um, but I think it's also very, very good for you. Um, so the question regarding the evaluation of the aware of citizens' awareness of the SDGs and the work that you are doing on SDGs, you provided us with many examples how you engage the students, how you engage the citizens, but could you elaborate more how you evaluate this process, do you, and if you have some ideas and recommendations for others? And uh, the participants, please feel free to draft the questions uh, on the chat in the meantime. So on engagement, we have a few plans for what we do in Bristol to try to improve engagement. I, we haven't undertaken an evaluation of our engagement. The closest that we have is that uh, about two weeks ago, our mayor held a, a State of the City address, which is an annual address that he does. We had Tony Pippa from the Brookings Institute visiting because it was during the Festival of Ideas that we host in Bristol. And Tony Pippa asked the audience at that event whether they had heard about the Sustainable Development Goals. And over half of the room of about 600 people raised their hands saying they knew of the SDGs. That's not very in-depth, obviously, and we recognize that. So one of the things we're looking at doing as a Sustainable Development Goals Alliance is better engagement with communities. We have a number of community groups that work um, already in our alliance and are engaged with the SDGs, but we also have representatives from different diaspora communities, uh, and we want we want to engage those communities around the Sustainable Development Goals. We currently refer to the SDGs in our city plan uh, fairly regularly. Uh, we also refer to them at city gatherings where we have some of our leaders. But I think the issue at the moment for Bristol is it's not left the leaders of the city. It's not gone further to the communities and to the normal person. So what we want to do is we are looking at um, funding a position, a, um, a city fellow is what it will be called, someone from funded by the university to engage with some of the, the communities and neighborhoods around the Sustainable Development Goals. We currently also have plans to do a roadshow for our city plan, which is the, which the SDGs are mapped into, where we plan to go to community groups next year to help understand what their views of the plan are and what their views of the future are. And we will probably be using the SDGs as a talking point and a framework for them in those community discussions. So that's our sort of next steps. But we're also planning a global goals center, which is an education center that we want to set up in Bristol. We are currently a limited company. We're uh, in the process of getting a venue and developing this center. But the idea being that we will have an interactive center for school children and also for businesses and individuals to come and attend and to do a tour using virtual reality software, but also an immersive experience where you understand and learn about the interconnections between your decisions at the local level in Bristol and the international implications. So whether that be through a um, looking at a fair trade cooperative coffee farm and pretending that you're in a fair trade cooperative coffee farm or looking a VR screen at the impact of plastics on marine wildlife or on uh, land, uh, on life on land as well. So there's some some planned steps towards wider engagement. It's not uh, fully embedded, and we don't really have a number on it. The best I have is that of the 600 city leaders that attended that meeting with the mayor, we had about half of the room who knew of the SDGs. Thank you. I have. I know that you presented this a bit in the uh, in your PowerPoint, but just to be super crystal clear, so because the most the one of the most common challenge is that what's the like we have the city strategy, and now if you are thinking about the SDGs, we'll need to evaluate the strategy, create a new strategy, implement the new indicators. 
And my question is, is the one city plan replacing the city strategy or is it a new strategy or is it the vision? What is the correlation? What is the position of the one city plan in the planning of the city of Bristol, especially in the strategic context? Um, the one city plan draws from the strategies of Bristol, so it feeds, it receives information from the existing strategies. We we drew from about 60 different strategies that existed in Bristol, I think, uh, as well as then drawing from communities and from experts to try to say what needs to be done and what the world might look like in 10 or 15 years, so what ne would need to be done in that time. Uh, one thing we are working on currently, though, is some one city strategies as a result of this. The one city plan isn't a delivery strategy. It's, it is more visionary and it's more about engaging the wider city. So it, it's not about who will do X, Y, Z. It's presenting what needs to be done so that the city knows how they can engage with the challenges that we're facing and how they can do something tangible and meaningful to improve the city. But what we're currently doing is we're working on a one city climate strategy where we will be working with city partners to figure out what the first steps are, what the what the key things are to becoming carbon neutral by 2030. And we're working on a one city inclusive economy, inclusive and sustainable economy strategy as well. And it's in those places that we'll begin to have some of the more complex discussions about the interconnections between the goals and the trade offs. One of the big challenges in Bristol is we want to expand our airport because it will help provide jobs for some of the poorest people in Bristol and actually in the UK, one of the neighbourhoods very near the airport in Bristol is in the bottom 1% in the UK in terms of deprivation and poverty. But actually, if we want to try to be carbon neutral by 2030, expanding the airport and increasing tourism in the city won't our efforts towards carbon neutrality. So that's where the discussions will be had in those in those strategy sessions as we begin these new city strategies that will come out of this. But it will be not just about how the council delivers on our vision for 2030, it will be about how the whole city. So the council will still produce its own strategies as it does and as it has been, but we will also be producing new strategies in partnership with leading thinkers in the city and key organizations. Great, thank you very much. Um, as I see that the discussion is ongoing still on our chat, I'm very happy that you are also sharing the experiences and providing examples from your cities and uh, giving ideas and tips uh, to each other. Just um, for you, I would like to close this webinar. Thank you very much for all your uh, patience. Thank you very much for Bristol. Thank you very much for Helsinki's team to join the webinar. As I mentioned before, we will share the recording uh, in coming weeks. We will send the presentations today to all of you because there were some technical issues. Uh, one more time, thank you very much. Uh, it was very inspiring from what we see from our members. Um, and have a nice day and have a nice afternoon. Thank you, Jaime, for the technical support and yes. for providing all the all the information and uh, handling this yeah. webinar. Thank you to all the members once again. And uh, as Alexander said, we will be sending the presentations and the recordings once the recordings are edited. Uh, please feel free to contact me if you have any further questions or if you would like any resources in the future. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye bye.